uh, concerns about this. So I would, you know, in terms of politicians, in terms of the media, we have to be absolutely ruthless about getting to the truth of this. But we also have to be clear about people's uh, reputations um, and take this in a step-by-step -step manner. Tristan Hunt, thank you very much indeed for joining us thank this you. morning. Now, of all the British theatre directors who've made their mark in recent years, Marianne Elliott really stands out. Her career has combined critical success with box office gold. She's the woman who directed the juggernaut that is War Horse, taking it from the National Theatre to the international stage. Last year, she directed Kim Cattrall to great acclaim in a classic American revival. One of her signature successes has been the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime, the play that made news headlines for all the wrong reasons last year. Barry Ann joins me now, along with Graham Butler, the show's newest star. Welcome to you both. Hi. Marianne, looking at your work, you seem to be somebody who always wants to put more onto the theatre than has traditionally been done. You have a lot of dance, you have special effects, you have lighting, you have huge puppets. Is this because <laughs> you're trying to bring in a generation who are used to sort of CGI effects and all the whiz-bang from television and film screens, basically? Uh, no, not necessarily. I think I just like to do something that it's, is exciting. And I like to challenge myself, and each show that I do, I try and do something very different from the last show. So I think it's just trying to push the, push the envelope. Curious seems to have almost as much dance in it as traditional acting. Is that part of the attempt to kind of explain to the audience what having Asperger's must feel like? Yes, it is, actually. In, in the book, what's tricky about the book is that it's first person, so it's this beautiful boy's voice. And you imagine, as you're reading the book, that you are Christopher. Yes. So that was our biggest challenge, I suppose, when we had to put it on the stage. Uh, and I felt like you really needed to understand what, what he saw and how he experienced things. So, for example, going into a very busy train station, I wanted to know <coughs> the audience to know that um, he felt very, very overwhelmed by all the signs and by all the people and very crowded and very... So you had to make the familiar world unfamiliar to the audience, basically. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. And, Graham, you've just taken over the role. You've had the chance. How did you get into, into the mindset of being somebody with this condition because of course it's not something that you can actually imagine yourself this is a different kind of brain yeah absolutely well partly we've got the amazing blueprint of Mark Haddon's book and Simon Stevens very faithful script mm. uh, um, and it's very sparse and Christopher from that first person narrative sees the world in that very different way and he, he's a he deals in facts and very little else um, but on top of that we had some incredibly generous people mm. from Southland School down in Limington and the Treehouse School uh, and met a number of people that were, were very happy to help us. Mm. Now the roof of course fell in literally. I was in the mm. theatre along the road when it happened. I can All remember right. it very well. Right. Um, how are you going to change the, how, how is the new production different from the one that was, was so rudely interrupted? Um, <clears throat> well it's not hugely different actually because we've just gone into a different theatre further down Shaftesbury Avenue. Yeah. We're in the Gilgood now. Um, <clears throat> it's a slightly bigger theatre and there are certain moments when he does this journey to London. Christopher has never been outside his street before on his mm. own. But there's one moment in the, in the piece where he decides he's got to find somebody yes. and he takes the journey from Swindon to London and he does it on his own. And um, <clears throat> that journey to London is, is uh, slightly more heightened, I suppose, than it has been before. Because each time we do it, we sort of try and polish and make you it... You push it harder. Yeah. ...more vivid, yes. Yeah, yeah. So. And what, what about that extraordinary evening? I think you, you did productions for the emergency services you yes. came to rescue people yeah, we and did. so forth. How yes. did it feel? It was an amazing time actually. It was hugely traumatic the night that the, that the roof fell in. Um, but what the National managed to do, which was extraordinary, was use all those brilliant actors who were then out of work um, and we did a, a pop-up version in Stratford Town Hall in daylight uh, we invited lots of kids from local schools, some of which had never been to the theatre before, um, to see the show free. And then we went to Ballet Rombert into a rehearsal room there, again did a pop-up version for all the emergency services and everybody right. who was involved that night. Right. So it felt like quite a healing experience. Now in Graham you've got a, a great young British actor taking the stage, but <laughs> we're seeing more and more and more on the West End stage people coming in from film and television. It mm. seems you can't do Shakespeare these days unless you've got a Hollywood or an HBO star. <laughs> are, are we, and you, you've of course worked <clears throat> with Kim Cattrall. Um, are you worried about the lack of opportunities for the top emerging British actors on, on the West End stage? 
I'm um, being crowded out a bit. Uh, not, not necessarily, no. I mean, I'm very lucky because I work at the National Theatre, which is subsidised, and there's less emphasis there because it's not a commercial theatre to have stars, you know, from films and TV. So um, that means that we can choose people who are either experienced or who, or who have been to really good drama schools. I suppose the one worrying thing is that drama schools are expensive and it's difficult yeah. to go there unless you have the financial means. So. Yes, yeah, so it becomes a slightly narrower yes. profession. Yes. Mm -hmm. We yeah. get back to the fact that almost all the, the tough guys in American, American uh, TV series came from Eton. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what about, what, what about um, the great, huge global success we were mentioning earlier on of War Horse? Um, it, Curious Incident is, in a way, a tougher sell. But is that going to go global as well, do you think? Why do you think it's a tougher sell? Well, it's, 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 a, it's, it's literally dark. It doesn't, it, doesn't have the, it doesn't have the great big emotions yeah. produced by the horses would yeah. make, make everybody cry so easily, <laughs> so readily. No, I don't know, actually. I think Curious Incident is uh, just as uh, epic in its scale and as, as emotional, okay. mm. because even Christopher, can't, he, can't chat, he can't articulate or tell us how he feels. The physicality of the production absolutely should transmit his huge emotional okay. uh, life. Well, it's, it's, it's a wonderful show. Very good luck to both of you with the run, and thank you very much indeed for thank coming you. in. Thank, thank you. you. Now, eight years ago, a Conservative MP wrote a book arguing that the forces of militant Islamism were determined to wage a war upon the West, which he described as the conflict of our times. He compared the Islamist threat with that posed by communism and the Nazis in the previous century. Strong stuff. Well, the writer was...